Hey guys, it's Zach here, and tonight I'm going to talk about the other things that um, after airsoft wiring kind of needs to be explained for airsoft weapons, and it's just a basic knowledge. Um, it's not going too complex. You'll see it's just common sense and stuff that you guys should know. Um, so I decided to make this video after I started to see some questions on airsoft answers, and people don't really figure out problems themselves. They don't take the time to diagnose and this is a good video to watch. So um, let's get right into it. Move the video down. Just move this over here. Alright, so here's my G36 uh, from Ares with the Echo 1 um, rail and a quick detach uh, Surefire Mad Bull Silencer. So let's say I'm starting to have some issues with this gun and I want to diagnose some problems. Um, let's say the gun is not feeding correctly. So for some whatever reason the uh, gun cannot shoot when in automatic or semi. First things you're going to do is remove your magazine. Check it for BBs. Make sure you're using point, uh, .2 um, gram BBs. Now it doesn't matter about the weight as much, but it's the size. You don't want to be using point .12, so you want to use point .2s or else you will damage your barrel right here. Um, so uh, as you look down, there are no BBs inside, but when you put the BBs in there, you're supposed to wound it up. If it's a high cap, this is a high cap. You wound it up until it comes to the top, and then you want to wind some more until you hear it uh, make a different sound inside. Now, if you see the BBs at the top, the next question is, can you get the BBs to shoot up into the gun? So that would be the hop-up area. When you turn the gun upside down, you can see where the hop-up is. I'm using some gadgets that are pretty cool in this video. Um, you can see the hop-up hole right here. It's kind of hard to see with this lighting. But what you're going to do is monitor the hop-up hole. So you have your gun upside down, and you put the magazine inside, and then you pull it out. Now, if BBs come out in here, and here they just come out, um, what that means is the, <clears throat> the button down in here that, or it, it's sometimes it's not a button, it's, it's the hole to the hop-up the magwell hole uh, depends if it's the hop-up or the magwell hole. This is a magwell hole. The reason you know is because it's not attached to the hop-up. It's just a hole that's attached to the magwell. Um, the the hop-up would be metal more than likely. Now, if I pushed it in and no BBs comes out, that means that this is not... there's a button on here that must be hit. It pushes it and BBs come flying out. So that would mean that this is not is not hitting in here correctly or the spring in the magazine is bad. Um, but if you do see the BBs going in there and you still have a feeding issue, the next thing you're going to try is to take out the BBs. Make sure you use an unjamming rod. And the way you put it in, you want this side up. So what happens is it hits the BB towards you. So you can see I put that side up. And you want to be careful when you do this because um, what happens my hands getting uncomfortable from this position. What happens is uh, in here where the bucking is, it could be hitting your unjamming rod, so you want to be very careful. Get it all the way down in there and check it with your eyes so you can see it. I can see it going back and forth in there and uh, there's no BBs. So it's clear. Take this out. Now that I know it's clear, what I can do is hook up the gun to a battery. So I could take off this rail and hook it up to a battery 
and uh, shoot it a couple times. Now when you go to shoot it on semi-automatic, of course be careful. If you're dealing with any BBs, wear eye protection. Um, but if you're shooting it in semi-automatic, make sure that you check down here and you see the nozzle of the gearbox going forward and then backwards. What that means is as soon as the BB drops in, it pushes it forward into the barrel, gets it ready to shoot it, and then comes back, waiting for the next BB to drop in, and then goes forward, shoots, comes back. So you have, should be watching that on semi. When you put it on auto, you should see it constantly doing that. Um, if you see it doing that and you're still having feeding issues, one problem that should be addressed or talked about is the magazine's spring. Um, if it's not very compressed, uh, if it's not a very good spring that compresses, what happens is you put the BBs in here and it barely feeds to the top, so you have to wind it a lot. Now that's a, it's a serious issue. Usually what you do is you just get a new magazine or you get an electric magazine that keeps pushing it up. Um, now, let's say, okay, we're done with that feeding part of the issue. What if you're looking down your, uh, your hop-up area hole right here and it's not moving back and forth? The nozzle's not moving back and forth. Well, obviously, you're going to have to open it up. So that's the first thing we're going to do right here, just so I can show you. So first thing I'm going to do is take off. If I can get to it, give me a moment. This is usually easier to do when I put it down like this. There we go. Guess I was getting this earlier very easily. Well, I don't like to do this, but let's go ahead and just do it this way. All right, so you're going to have to get down to the body. Go ahead and pull this pin out. Pull this off carefully. I don't want to scrape my silencer. All right, set that aside. See, I was trying to click. I couldn't get it off for some whatever reason. All right. Um, now that you're here, we have to get to the gearbox. So I'm going to pull out these two more pins. This is an Aries G36, so it makes it easy. See, here's another example of it's not a hop-up. It's just a magwell plastic hole that goes to your hop-up. See here, it doesn't have that kind of hop up. If you look closely, um, all you see is the nozzle right there. So, let me zoom that up. So you can see the nozzle right here. It's right there. So let's go ahead and start to take it out. Push the other pin in the back. And what you want to do open the stock. Be ready for the spring because it kind of shoots out. And there's the part for the blowback. There's two parts right there. And then you want to slide this out. There's a third part right there. And then now you can push the stock and lock it back in place and pull the G36C gearbox out. Be careful not to snip any wires. Slide it out very carefully. Sometimes it's stuck and you have to do a little bit of lifting. Sometimes make it so where it gets caught. 
You just have to be careful what you're doing. There we go. So there's the body. Now we've got the gearbox. Um, check the gearbox wires. If you remember my last video, I was talking about the wires. Here you can see it's actually starting to eat away at the uh, heat shrink right here. It's uh, getting pretty torn up. However, it's not down into the wires yet, so I don't have a short problem. And that's the only place that's kind of eating it up. You can replace that with this kind of tape. This is a clear electrical vinyl tape. Vinyl, that's how I guess you pronounce it. I'm never good at those words. But it's electrical tape that's clear. Now the reason that's just clear instead of black is you can see where your cuts are and then you kind of remember, oh, that was a cut. Um, some people would just say, oh, we'll just tape it. But then you could see how damaged it is, so it's good to have the clear. Um, some of these are flame retardant, what that means, and this is flame retardant right here. If you do try to use, um, if you try to use any fire on it, you, usually uh, it's just to heat up the tape and make it stick. Um, it, since it's a flame retardant, it really won't do anything. Uh, it won't stick very well, so you, that's not what that's for. It's not a real heat shrink. What you want is a real heat shrink if you're going to get to that point. Um, but for easy fixes, this is you can get this at Walmart, Target, pretty much any um, store that has electronics or industrial kind of type of stuff. So I could apply that right there for now. Um, I don't think it's necessary because the way it's getting cut looks like it's get, it gets cut when it's going back and forth, putting it inside, not when it's shooting. Um, so I'm looking at it, and the first thing you want to check is this. And you should notice, looking at the top here, um, you should notice that this should be where it pushes back and forth a little bit, and when you shoot it, it should go back and forth a little bit. If it doesn't go back and forth a little bit, you probably have a problem with your tap-up plate inside. That's the thing that helps push this nozzle forward. And you should check your nozzle to make sure there's no cracks. Also look at it to make sure a BB can get attached to it. Usually when these things go forward, they grab the BB and they lock, almost compress to it, so it can get a nice good shot. Um, this one you can tell, especially with pushing it, it's in good condition. Looking at the front of the gearbox in very good condition. So I do know that there's no problem here. Um, also, people have asked questions about their uh, selector switch not working, especially on a, on a gearbox version 3. If you notice the tap-up plates, or excuse me, the selector's plate right here, and on this side, there's a selector plate down inside there. When you turn it, see this one's like metal right here. See, there's the metal. On the other side, it's this part right here, but it turns this tap-up plate. Or excuse me, the selector plate. I keep saying tap-up. You need to look for springs, spring-loaded. Um, there's going to be gears down here and here. But here's an example of a spring load right here. There's a little spring right there. Also, um, there'll be one down inside on this side. So you don't want to lose those. If you do, what happens is you flip your selector switch and then your selector switch doesn't stay in place. You're doing something, you move the gun and it goes back up because there's no spring to lock it in place. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so um, also sometimes there is a little hex screw on these uh, selector um, switches and you want to tighten those so that your selector switch doesn't come off. This one is not coming off. There is no tightening for that. You don't have to worry about it. Um, it's in there firmly. This is well made. You can see that obviously. Uh, so I do like the, the Ares G36C because it's very easy, or G36 series. It's very easy to, to unscrew this and then there's a hex. You can pull that and get the spring right out. Um, the gearbox is very easy to put back together once you get the hang of it. The first time I messed with it was about an hour long. Um, no difficulty after that. <clears throat> so, next thing to know 
is to have one of these handy. This is a continuity tester. And what that does is you put this on one side of a wire. As you can see, it's just kind of like a car, uh, I forget what you call these dang things. You just attach that to one side of the wire and then you turn it on and you push with this other side. Some of these are battery operated so they can tell and then they turn on. But um, for something like this, obviously you can put the tester in here on this side, but to test the other side you're going to have to move this touching some solder or almost clamp it onto if you can the solder. Obviously I can't clamp it on but you can definitely hold it there while you test it. And all it's going to do is give you a light or a blink, um, maybe make a noise and that tells you that uh, the wire goes from here to there in uh, pretty good signal strength. Um, also another thing to have handy is some pliers and uh, cutters. Um, these are small version um, needle nose pliers and diagonal pliers. Now with these diagonal pliers you can use this to pull the springs and put them into position in the gearbox. That's something nice to know because usually your hands is too big and you can't do what you need to. This is perfect. You have one of these small ones. You can put the spring in and pull it with the pliers and put it right in position. Um, so that's something to need. Uh, the pliers you can use for cutting springs. You can use for cutting wire. You can use it for uh, cutting plastic um, if you need to be. So you can use it for multiple things. Um, you also need something which is a gauge. It will tell you what's uh, how, how the diameter is of the wire. So you got a red and black wire here. Uh, speaker wire is what I would replace these with if this is damaged right here um, and the wire is pretty much severed. You'd have to put new speaker wire going from here, solder it on here, and then going to the next location and solder that. Um, if it's really not cut that bad or maybe it's cut over here, what you can do is with the new speaker water wire, solder from one joint to the other and then put some heat shrink over it. Um, well, the, the correct way to do it is first to cut it and then uh, put heat shrink in first because once you um, solder one side and the next, you have to be able to have the heat shrink already on so you can slide it in position and then you'd use um, not a torch, a cigarette lighter. I was trying to think of what they are. Start that on fire, get it enough and it will shrink perfectly so it's lock it on like this is. Um, that's how you'd fix the wire. It's pretty simple to do. Um, solder irons, you can get them at Walmart, Target, um, industrial stores, electronic stores sometimes. It just depends because you're going to be soldering more than likely. Um, I wouldn't get any of the kind that's called the cold heat. Cold heat suck uh, for the most part. Reason being is you have to hold it directly you have to be really advanced with it and a lot of times I just every time I use it it sucks I like the old soldering iron it is hot you just have to be very careful what you're doing you don't want to burn yourself um, also you want to be able to make a good solder joint you want to watch some solder videos to show how to watch, or how to make a good solder uh, because you don't want to make a poor one where it just comes off you put the wire there and it comes off a good trick is to heat up the wire and the solder together. Um, usually what people do is they just heat up the solder, it falls on, and then they heat up the solder itself. That's not a good way to do it. Um, you need to heat up both the wire and the solder at that location so it sticks well in there. <clears throat> so same thing here. Let's say I want to change this to a Dean's. Um, I could cut the wire here. Probably not a good spot right here. You don't want to be real close to the end. What you want to do is probably cut away some of this heat shrink and put it about right there. Have an extended wire that goes to a Dean's um, and uh, um, throw on the heat shrink first over here and then solder it um, together. Uh, two different wires. You got a red one and a black one here. So you don't solder the red and black together. That'll give you a short if you remember what I said. You want to solder them separately, heat shrink them separately. Now that way that it doesn't have the wiring on the inside touch. 
Um, another thing about the Dean's Connector, if you're going to go with the Dean's Connector, the Burst Wizard from Evike is not a real MOSFET. Now, the definition of MOSFET is it's got big con contacts. These to my connectors do not have big contacts. Big contacts would be on a Dean's uh, connector. Uh, the reason being is because the metal is really big and it's a, you, sometimes it's a different type. Um, when the metal touches, it's got such a good flow. That's what I would say. They, they touch like this. Is, imagine this is a small Tamiya. You've got one finger and another small Tamiya, one finger. But a Dean's, you've got basically two. And when you put them together, you've got more of a solid contact. And you have the wire uh, can get the electricity a lot faster, get it flowing through. That's what hel helps you get the faster uh, trigger response. And you push it, it's all duh, 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 shooting as much faster. Um, is the Dean's connector. So here's a little bit of an issue. Is people think, oh, I'll just, you know, I'll hook up the small to my connector and then go a Dean's connector afterwards. The problem is you have thinning within the wire, so you've got the big contacts, but it has to get small right here. So your Dean's connector means nothing pretty much. It's just the same as having a small Tamiya connector. What you would have to do, if you're going to have to have a split here, you'd have to cut this and put a Dean's connector here to another Dean's connector. That's the only way it's going to get done. Otherwise, you could cut this, extend the wire with speaker wire because it's thick um, up to the Dean's connector and just don't have a disconnection at this point. Okay, so that's good to know. <clears throat> what else can I say about this? Um, again, watch the airsoft wiring video. You need to know that red and black stuff. You need to be careful that you don't have them touching anywhere within the gearbox. So here you can't have any black. It's all red. Um, as you can see in the front here, another red. So the black is coming to the back here. We got a red and black, but it's split off. So somewhere down in the gearbox, I don't feel like taking this apart again and going through, um, putting the pins back in and so forth when it's already working perfectly fine. <clears throat> so the next thing that I would basically talk about is uh, shooting your gun. I would hook up the battery, but some people are sleeping in the room, so it would wake them up. Uh, what I would do, <laughs> as soon as I said that, the baby woke up. Uh, what I would do is, if you can't get your gun firing, you can take the gearbox out, and there's different ways to check your gearbox. Um, one, you need to know if the gears are straight and shimmed properly. And to do this, a good way is to take apart the gearbox and put the gears in just by themselves with the shims and then close up the gearbox. And with your finger, if you can get down to the gears or if you have an instrument, um, something like the pliers, they can pretty much get down in there or from this end, you'll see a gear in here. Uh, you want to push it and just see if they spin properly, if they spin smoothly. Um, also another trick, don't put a lot of uh, people like to spray oil right here and it drips down in the piston where it needs it but then it drips everywhere else. It gets in the mechanical stuff and trust me you don't want oil going into your motor, you don't want it going into the, the electronic stuff like maybe you have a little board in here, a little circuit board. Um, you can damage your electronic stuff and then you're like oh what happened? Well you broke it yourself without realizing. Um, so here uh, you would run the gears by themselves and then you would run the, the piston by itself checking to see if it moves back and forth. Um, same with the anti-reversal latch. If the anti-reversal latch is over here somewhere um, in this vicinity of this gearbox, but if, if it's not on correctly, what happens is the gears can spin backwards. That's what the anti-reversal latch does, is it prevents the gears from spinning backwards. Only helps it spin forward. So, um, if you don't have the anti reversal latch, you'll get a lot of jamming. So that's an issue with jamming. Uh, as far as, what else? Um, check all your gears. The very last gear up here, I forget the name of it, is supposed to have uh, basically a, a point on it, like a circular point. And what that does is that rolls with the tap up plate. So the tap up plate can come back and forth, um, which connects to this nozzle up here. 
if that's broken off or the tappet plate is damaged there, this will not move back and forth, this nozzle. Uh, so you need to check that. Again, check your nozzle for cracks if it needs to be replaced. Um, you can check for compression <clears throat> by taking the uh, parts out and just put the cylinder with the piston in the cylinder head and the nozzle and just hold this front end right here while you push the piston in and you can see how much compression it has because it does it blow out a lot of air. Um, so a, a crack in your in your uh, nozzle would prevent that. Usually it's just people like to tape it or something but I don't see the point. I would just buy a new nozzle head. You might as well, if you're going to fix it, fix it properly. Um, also you could be buying something that's more uh, better build quality so that it'll last. Um, now, uh, other things that you should know about springs. So we kind of just talked about the gearbox. I don't think there's that much to talk more about the gearbox um, other than your motor. We'll talk about springs in a second. Your motor needs to be in the right position. If it's not in the right position, it doesn't touch the gears down here. And when you go to shoot it, it gives it a nice whining noise and the gun doesn't really move the gears. Um, so you have to position your gun motor properly. Um, sometimes there's a screw down here or a hex and you want to turn that until your motor reaches the right position and the way you can tell is usually by shooting the gun because you hear the whining of which way uh, you want to put it. If you don't have it properly set up what happens is you shoot this a lot and it actually breaks the teeth on the motor or the gear, the first gear. Um, so that's pretty much it. Make sure you tighten down all the screws on the gearbox. Um, as you can see this one doesn't have the King Arms metal that comes up here like this on the top like people were saying one person said all the version 3 gearboxes have it I, this is proof right here they don't I knew that not all of them do because you know I've already been inside the the Ares G36 uh, version 3 gearbox and it doesn't have it um, but this is pretty reinforced you can see mine hasn't had any real issues other than I had some bushings down here. They're actually called ball bearings uh, shatter because it got too hot. Um, the gear spin really fast and the ball bearing is just a placement. It holds in a gear so you can basically think of it like this. Take your hand, make a circle uh, with it and put a pipe. Put a pipe in it and when you turn it really fast, really 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 fast, the, uh, your hand's going to get real hot. So that was the ball bearing. It got real hot and just started kind of melting a bigger hole into the ball bearing and eventually just shattered it. It just poof. So what you need is a bushing. Uh, usually lasts a lot longer because it's all metal. Um, there's no balls inside. There's no, usually it's, some of them are oilless, so it's kind of more solid. So you can imagine that, sure, it's not faster, but it will hold a lot better. And so I replaced these after they shattered and I have to say it works well. Um, I can't really see a difference because you're not going to see that much of a difference with uh, a, a ball bearing and a bushing. Um, There's just, just not a huge improvement between the two unless you're looking for quality where it doesn't break down as easily. Um, so talking about that, uh, I think that's pretty much it for the gearbox. Going to the springs, it's important to know there's a spring inside. You should always check all springs to your gun after a game. Uh, remember that they cannot be compressed. If left, if left compressed, you basically destroy your springs. Um, so there's a spring in here and you can see it's not compressed. Show right here. It's not compressed. Okay, see that? It's not compressed. Compressed it would be all the way back, like this top of this handle. This is just a handle piece for the blowback, but um, it'd be compressed all the way back. Um, so we don't have that issue here because we aren't putting it there. Um, we aren't, we, it's not compressed, excuse me. So to uncompress it, there's a couple ways. This one you can actually remove it and compress it here, or you can shoot it in semi-automatic. Put it in semi-automatic, shoot it off somewhere, and uh, the, it will decompress all the way to the front. When you run in automatic mode and you're shooting your gun, the piston goes back and forth and can stop anywhere on point when you let go. So it can stop there, for instance, 
and your spring is still compressed. So what you need to do is make sure you're in semi, fire it, it's all the way forward, put it in safety, and remember that when you remove your magazine with the BBs, some of the BBs are going to come out, but some are still going to be left in the hop-up. So what you're going to want to do is, of course, have a jamming rod to remove it. Um, sometimes they just stay in the barrel or in the hop up near the barrel and your gun is still loaded after you remove the magazine. Some mm -hmm. people just don't realize that. Um, so we go ahead and put this back in there because you know this spring is fine. Um, but we have the spring for the blowback and that of course is not compressed. Uh, it's usually forward unless I leave it compressed. I left it forward of course on the magazines you must unwind them because if you leave them wind you destroy your magazine over time um, the, the springs in here are just going to be so compressed so what you want to do at the top here there's a button that you push towards you so that'd be towards me this way and it will release all the BBs but you don't want the BBs hitting you in the face so what you want to do is cover your hand like this to the side and do it slowly and of course they will still shoot out, but that way you won't lose all of them. Um, also empty from this end, open it up, empty them all out if you have a high cap. Um, turn it upside down, make sure that you finish the last bit of them. After, you, after you're after you near the end, shake it. Okay, it's empty. That's good to go. <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty much it on the basic kind of stuff. Um, can't think of anything else other than you want to make sure your gun is clean and clear of debris on the inside of the barrel. That's what the cleaning is for, the cleaning rod. And to clean it properly, let's say you get a lot of dirt in there, you can use a little bit of a cloth. Uh, you wrap it around in this thing and you do it and you slide it in. Now one trick about doing that is you want to make sure your hop up is not all the way up. Um, what happens is the bucking kind of blocks the uh, un jamming rod and you actually destroy your bucking if you're going in there and you're hitting it hard and pushing it so that's why they say push your bucking all the way down so that it really you can't really destroy your hop up all the way down so you can't destroy your bucking um, so that's pretty much it that I can think of uh, for basic kind of stuff to know about the AEGs and be be more aware of um, good thing when buying AEGs as long as you buy a good external body and somewhat a good build on uh, construction on the inside where you can work on it, like this Ares G36, this is an, an excellent gun. If something breaks down, it's very easy to get inside of it. Um, I can remove the motor very easily, trade it out if the motor goes bad, if I need to remove a spring, or the whole gun gearbox just something goes really bad, all the springs start, or all the uh, screws start going bad. I just replace screws and I've got a good gun. If the material is bad then I have a problem where I have to throw out the whole gearbox because let's say the metal for the gearbox is not reinforced, it starts cracking, you're pretty much screwed. You're going to have to get a whole new gearbox because it's not going to have the same shape. You can see this is a little different shape. I'd have to get the same Ares uh, G36 version 3 gearbox. Um, also the top has that blowback feature so um, definitely would have to have a version 3 Geary's G36 gearbox, otherwise I wouldn't be able to. Um, so that's pretty much it guys. And if you want to, another, another thing that's interesting, you know this is wired to the front right here. I could technically move this and rewire it to the back with space in a G36 on the Ares. You can see it could go in there and do that. Um, yeah, on an M4, sometimes you can't push it through the wire, so what you want to do is clip the wires down to the gearbox and solder them, and then have them come out to the back. And Or sometimes they have them flow through here, come out to the back, depending on how they have to make the wire go. Um, but that's pretty much it, guys, on the basic knowledge of, of the uh, AEGs. And I hope you guys really learned something from this video. Um, take into consideration when you're working on your airsoft guns. You use common sense. Um, of course, when you open up the gearbox, you need to decompress the spring in here because when you open it, there's a bunch of springs in here. You've got a, 
a spring that's uh, usually between the motor sometimes, depending on if it needs a height adjustment. Uh, you've got the spring here um, by the piston, and you've got springs um, down in here to the, the selector plates. Um, you could have a spring that's uh, to the tap up, tap it, a spring to the trigger. Um, so you want to make sure that all these things are kind of held in place when you start to take apart your gearbox and that you remove the main spring right here. Um, this one has the ability to take it out easily. Some of them you have to push a screwdriver in so you can decompress it while you open up the top. <clears throat> but um, just be careful when taking apart your gearbox. Put all the pieces in an organized place. Take pictures of your gearbox while you're working on it. It makes it a heck of a lot easier. Um, one thing I almost forgot to state when you're putting the gearbox back in, you want to make sure that you're careful with the nozzle right here and that you slide it in this way, going in very carefully into your hop-up. Because if you're not careful, what happens is you crush your nozzle into the hop-up and you shatter or you crack your nozzle. Um, so that's something to know. I've never had that happen, but I've seen a lot of videos and people uh, jam it in there and then you hear that they cracked it well easily they could avoid it if they were being careful and they looked down at the nozzle because um, it's a delicate thing you want to make sure that that doesn't break G36 back together I hope this video was very helpful for you guys and I'll catch you guys later Zach out with a fist see ya